and now join us on the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry as the Lord uses us to watch a clip of feeding the sheep. Now let's go lastly <laughs> to First Timothy. I know some are saying, oh, First Timothy 3. Now we're not going to go there just yet. We will, but not just yet, because there's something else that we need to see along the way. We'll start at 1 Timothy. You know, uh, let, let's, let's, let's go to... Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's go to First Timothy six, and let's start at verse one. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. The apostle is ministering to the pastor, Pastor Timothy. He wasn't no apostle. Timothy was a pastor. And in the Greek, it's the same thing as bishop. Today, you got pastors trying to instruct apostles. You have prophets and prophetesses trying to instruct apostles. You have evangelists trying to impress the apostles but you can't do that why because as we see in scripture it is the apostle that does the instructing not that the apostle is superman or the head of the church because he's not but he has a mission he has a responsibility. The Lord told Peter, strengthen when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. That's the shock. Paul, a brother apostle, was used by the Lord to minister to Pastor Timothy. Verse 3 again, 1 first first Timothy 6. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. There's a lot of people that say, never mind doctrine. Well, then they don't know what doctrine is. If you buy a bookcase and you got to put it together, in order to do it correctly, you need the doctrine. If you have a car and something go wrong with the car and you want to know what certain symbols and things that come up on the dashboard mean, then you got to look at the doctrine of the car. The word doctrine is very important is just as misunderstood as the word dispensation. There's a lot of people that try to be deep. Oh God, he's doing great things with us in this dispensation. Oh, they put syllables on that. And they believe dispensation means time, but that's not what it means. Dispensation in the dictionary means an agreement or a system that is 
effective or having rule, let me say it a simpler way. A dispensation is an agreement for a particular and at a particular time. So dispensation is used along with time, but it doesn't mean time. Because you can have a law or an agreement if time stands still. <laughs> that makes sense? So it's connected to time, but it doesn't mean time. Look it up. Go on the dictionary. Go online. Look up dispensation. And it means, it's from the root word dispense, which means to give out. So it can't mean time. It means an agreement. It means a system, a law. Uh, 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 um, oh, God. Look it up. An agreement, that's the, that's the simplest way I can say it. An agreement at a particular time. That's what dispensation is. If any man, again, verse 3, teach otherwise, 1 Timothy 6, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. So when you see those ministers chasing filthy lucre and they teach people to do this oh you got to make them give you got to make them tithe you got to command them to do give this and give that and give get away from them because after they finish draining everybody else they're gonna get you yes you should give to help the ministry the service of god if the ministry is feeding you, like the Lord told the apostles, don't take nothing with you because a workman is worthy of his meat. That's his food, his this, his that, his that, his this. You don't lord it over to people and tell them, you got to take care of me. You got to pay my car note. You got to. I don't have a car note because I, I, I wouldn't have a car note. I wouldn't dare put the ministry in debt. But you got to pay my car note. You got to pay my mortgage. You got to pay this. And that that's, that's wrong. And there's people who think that they're doing God a favor and they, they, they give in to it. They capitulate. Oh, I'll get my leader <laughs> not not they don't call the lord their leader they call a man or a woman standing behind a podium with a collar on i will get my leader an iphone or o phone or a p phone or a q phone and and i'll pay the bill and but did the leader say if it throw you out don't do it Don't do it if it throw you out. Now, the Lord put it in your heart to be a blessing. Sure, be a blessing. But don't be controlled and told, do this for me and you'll be blessed. Brother Paul told the pastor Timothy, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. This first Timothy chapter six, verse five. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Now let's jump to chapter three of first Timothy. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, He desireth a good work. He didn't say the title of bishop, because it's not a title. 
He said the office of bishop, the vocation, the calling. Now, all right, let's handle something for a quick second. Then we got to pray and get into the lesson. <laughs> the Bible already been speaking. In Ephesians 4, there's a five-fold ministry. The apostle, prophet, which prophet is going to that too, prophet and prophetess, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. It don't say bishop in there. So in order for bishop to be a bona fide office, it has to go under one of these five. So the apostle is over a bishopric. The prophet is not a bishop. The evangelist is not a bishop. The prophetess can't be a bishop. Why? Because it says here in 1 Timothy 3 that a bishop then must be blamed, this verse, to the husband of one wife. That has not changed. I know Nancy Pelosi is trying to change gender words, but the scripture. Jesus said, not one jot or tittle. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. That don't mean he can only be married one time because sometimes the Lord bless you to marry somebody and then they leave God. Then what you supposed to do? Uh, uh, be neglected? Be denied? No. But that means you have one wife at that moment. You can't be a bigamist. You can't be in a polygamy. You can't have three wives at one time talking about I'm a bishop. No. One wife. And again, if she leaves the marriage, if she leaves God, if she leaves you and she refused to give in the biblical instruction and come back in her marriage like the Holy Ghost tell her to, then God will remove her. And while she thinks that she's blessed, she can preach from now on. That don't mean a thing because you can preach and Jesus not be with you. God is not going to deny the man of God and say, okay, now you be without the blessing of marriage. Mm -mm. Oh, no, apostle, because it says that in Romans 7, that is long, right? It talks about the law. We're not under the law. We're under grace. We're under grace. Because according to the law, God said, if you sin, you die. But we're under grace. The Lord is merciful and long-suffering. He's always been there, but he's really demonstrating it now. And God knows we need to praise God and hallelujah and thank him for it because we have become a very stiff-necked people. Hold that thought. The office of bishop got to be under one of the five. Again, apostles have a bishopric. They have what a bishop would have, the flock. Many, they, they apostles are just used by God to establish the people in the faith. They have a bishopric. The prophet is not a bishop. The prophetess can't be a bishop. The male evangelist is not a bishop. The female evangelist cannot be a bishop. The teacher is not a bishop, but a bishop should teach. So it's under the office of pastor, which in the Greek, the office of pastor means overseer. It also means superintendent. And in the Greek, bishop means the same thing, superintendent and overseer. Now we covered the teacher the bishop, which is the pastor. We covered the apostle, we covered the evangelist, we covered the prophet and prophetess. Now, let's pray. <laughs> I'll give you the title and the thought that God gave me and then we'll just tackle this and be through. 
Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins. Yes, Lord. God said, women, cover your head. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 5, cover your head. We're going to talk about that. Again, cover your head. Brothers, uncover your head. If you got on a do-rag, take it off while we pray. You can put it back on. But take it off while we're in prayer, okay? While we go before the throne of grace, okay? If you got a prayer shawl, put it around your shoulders. Brothers, take it off your head. You, you can't cover your head and go before God and worship and even speaking before him. You can't do it. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 4. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins. Thank you for this time of gathering and fellowship. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for you doing the teaching. Lord, you just took this a whole different way. And we just thank you. And we worship you. Allow me to decrease again, I ask, that you may increase and do the teaching and minister to us. Upbraid those that are going against your word. But those that want to hear you, feed them. Bless them because of their obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You do the teaching. We thank you for hearing us and for answering us. Answering us. We rebuke the devil. We plead the blood over us and against the devil. And we thank you for the blessings you're going to pass upon us that we don't even know yet. In Jesus' name, we thank you we pray. Amen. The title or the thought that God gave me again is called Read the Book. And this is part three, because we're in a series, remember? Part one, the Lord used me, Apostle Whitfield, and Prophetess Verna to do a tag team. That was part one of Read the Book. And that was using First uh, Peter chapter 4 verse 17 which says for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God and in the Greek house of God meant the family of God the relatives of God and if it first begin at us the family of God what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Mm. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? We're all sinners, but we are believing sinners. In other words, we, when we mess up, we say, Lord, forgive us. A lot of people say, well, I need to repent. Well, before you talk about repenting, because repent means to turn away from. You can't repent unless you first acknowledge. Acknowledge what? What God said about an issue. Then you have to confess. Confess what? That you don't do what God said to do or what God said about the issue. Mm -hmm. so first we acknowledge Lord you said that takes reading then we confess but Lord I don't do <laughs> I'm sorry and then upon being godly sorry we repent we turn away from our sin and after we mess up again, then we do the same thing again. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us on the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry as we watch the clip on feeding the sheep. I pray that you got something out of it and got encouraged. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850. 24 7. God bless you and again thank you for watching. In Jesus name. Amen.